Hi, I'm Richard Brown. So we're here in the midst of the Halloween season. It's getting spooky out here. You know, just as an aside, being from California, didn't really appreciate the fall season until moving out to the East Coast. Um, so really enjoying the change of weather, although never skated in this weather. Anyway, so I'm on my way to the skate park. We've been talking about zombies. So the metaphysics of consciousness is something that I'm interested in. I'm also interested in the science of consciousness, but I spend a fair amount of time thinking about the metaphysics of consciousness. Is physicalism true? Is consciousness physical? Now, the zombie argument against physicalism can be countered in the ways that I've been talking about with anti-zombies or shambies, physical duplicates that are conscious with no non-physical properties mere physical duplicates that are conscious. Now, this argument depends on phenomenal consciousness being real. And as I said before, I'm not an illusionist, but some people have asked me about that and I was uh, thinking about it and it occurred to me that there's actually an argument from the anti-zombies, shambies against illusionism. What is this guy doing though? Okay. So the illusionists uh, it's hard to pin them down, honestly. And uh, I've, on my podcast, Consciousness Live, I've talked to a couple of illusionists, um, Francois Camaray and uh, Keith Frankish. And I, I've spoken with Keith a few times. In fact, my very first like online philosophy discussion, one of the first ones I ever had was with Keith Frankish for Philosophy TV. When was that, like back in 2010? I don't even remember. Um, but uh, he was basically given the proto version of what would become illusionism. And I think the response that I gave back then is pretty good still, which is that his reasons for denying that phenomenal consciousness exists are mostly epistemic. So what does that mean? Well, phenomenal consciousness typically introduced as the what is likeness of experience, the phenomenal quality, that there's something that's like for one when one sees a sunset. Okay, so don't want to miss my turn while I'm getting all excited about philosophy over here. Uh, so the what is likeness there, the subjective aspect, the subjective quality of experience, all of those things are the, uh, according to uh, someone like me, the data for a science of consciousness. Um, whereas for the illusionist, the data is reports about consciousness. Um, and once you explain all of that, once we explain why we say the things that we say about consciousness, then according to the illusionist, we're done. There's nothing further that needs to be explained that's left out, um, uh, and that's all that there is to it. Okay, so I find that view to be sort of hard to accept or understand. now. In the weak version, illusionism is pretty palatable. And almost everybody's got to accept some version of weak illusionism. Um, so even someone like David Chalmers, who's like a phenomenal realist, a non-physicalist, he, he thinks that the way the experiences that we have phenomenal qualities are presented, they're as a, of objects out there in the world. Like the redness is on the table. Now we know that that's wrong because of illusions and because of the science. <clears throat> what science tells us um, but still our experience it seems to us as though we're being presented with simple properties of objects in the external environment so that's a kind of weak illusion because the illusion isn't about consciousness itself but about one of the properties um, that consciousness presents so I think that I think that some kind of weak illusionism is pretty uh, mild and yeah probably everybody's gonna end up almost nobody's gonna say look we just take everything at face value so if that's the case then the way conscious our access to it our epistemic access to it the way we know about it um, may be slightly distorted and we may think you know come away with the impression that consciousness uh, has certain properties when it doesn't but in order to diffuse the hard problem and the really fulfill the illusionist agenda of um, doing what they want to do, you have to be what's called a strong illusionist and deny the existence of consciousness altogether. And very few people are willing to do that. I think Francois Camaret is one of the people who come closest. 
I think Keith Frankish kind of goes back and forth on, on this point. Um, because it's a very strange position to hold that uh, consciousness is illusionary in this sense that we have a belief that we have these properties, a subjective quality, a phenomenal aspect. Uh, we have a belief that there's something that it's like to be us, but that belief is mistaken. It's wrong. All right, so what do the anti-zombies have to do with this? Well, I think that the main argument for illusionism is a desire to try to explain consciousness using the ordinary scientific methods that we have at our disposal. So the illusionist is someone who says, look, science has been very successful and we use this certain method, this third person objective method, and um, we've made tremendous progress in all sorts of areas. And here in the study of the mind and consciousness, we should apply the very same method, third person objective method, uh, that means data which is accessible from multiple points of view, not introspective, etc. Um, and what can so that sort of science explain? And I think their conclusion is, well, it can't explain this subjective, qualitative, phenomenal thing. So that must be an illusion because it doesn't fit with what science can explain. That's how I understand the illusionist picture. But first of all, it is conceivable that consciousness is physical. So one way to do it is just to imagine a brute identity, to conceive of a brute identity. That's one way to do it. And when you conceive of a brute identity, you're conceiving of consciousness just being a physical state. There's no contradiction that is derivable from that. Um, but in, in such a world, there'd be no explanation because uh, identity claims like that are brute and you don't get explanations. Now I can conceive of that just being the way things are and moving on with my life, but the illusionist is gonna be someone who says, no, that's not giving a theory of consciousness. What we want is a theory of consciousness. But in response to that, I think I can conceive of consciousness being physical and there being a theory of it that explains it in physical terms. Now, I don't know what that theory would be. I don't think we're close to having it yet, but I can conceive of somebody having it. It's sort of like, you know, conceiving of an unknowable truth, a truth that no one can know. Well, what is that truth? Well, I don't know, it's unknowable, but I still can make sense of a, the world turning out in such a way that there is a truth that's not knowable. That there is a box with something in it that no one can access. No one can ever look inside of it. So I don't know what a physicalist theory of consciousness would look like that really satisfied everybody and made us made it intelligible how consciousness was physical. But I can conceive of such a thing being the case. And if you don't find that conceivable, then to quote the great philosopher Daniel Dennett, try harder like I'll be doing out here in the half pipe. <laughs>